Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mo, co-founder and CEO of Gadget. And I'm Harry. I'm the other co-founder in the CTO. We're really excited to have everyone here with us today and be able to share with you some more details about some of the exciting new announcements we've uh, we've made over the last few days, shed a bit more light about how the features and functionality works, and what exciting new categories of web apps you can build with Gadget with this new functionality. So let's get right to it. Uh, before we get to the exciting stuff, I wanted to share a personal anecdote with you all about Gadget. When Harry and I started the company, our ambition was to simplify the process of building and running any web app, not just Shopify apps. The toil of booting up infrastructure, the repetitive nonsense, the boilerplate code, the features you've built 10,000 times before, those are all pain points and frustrations that are equally true uh, if you're building a typical JS web app on the internet or a Shopify app. We wanted to take this burden on for everybody. So we spent the first two years of our journey building, refining, and polishing our infrastructure and our framework within the Shopify community and making sure that we had perfected it. We offered the framework to the Shopify community first, and we leveraged all of your feedback to iterate on the product, evolve it, and simplify it. In the half a year that we've been out of beta, we've seen thousands of Shopify app developers deploy hundreds of custom and public Shopify apps that are now served and installed on tens of thousands of brands, big and small. We're processing over a billion API events, and we've handled over 350 million Shopify webhooks alone. We couldn't build the product or the framework we've built without you folks. It's this incredible feedback that you've given us along the way that's made this possible. We're excited to continue to offer you the latest Shopify API integration so that you can continue to succeed with Gadget. But we're also excited about what's coming out in the future, so let's stop talking about the past and transition to the future. Starting today, you can use the same Gadget product and framework that you're familiar with to build two entirely new categories of applications. The first, any JS-powered web app that needs authentication built in. That could be internal tools, that could be a standalone SaaS application that you plan on selling to others, any JS-powered web app. The second template is for AI apps that connect to popular LLM hosting platforms like OpenAI. Much like the Shopify app template, both of these come with the same gadget infrastructure and framework that you're used to, but they also include a set of additional building blocks that are really designed to make the development experience around those types of applications as simple, painless, and fast as possible. The web app template is particularly great for building internal tools and standalone SaaS applications that aren't tied to a specific platform like Shopify. With the template, you can effectively build just about anything on the internet. So if you can do it in JS, you can now do it with Gadget just 10 times faster. The web app template comes with auth working out of the box. That's a front end that's fully set up with Google SSO and an extensible back end user management system that's described in gadget models and actions. All of this works right out of the box. When you start a project with this template, you start with a login system that looks and feels great and works, and you just customize it to your specific needs, both in the front end as well as on the server side functionality that you wish us to run. We expect to see you folks build a lot of new internal tools and public SaaS apps with this template. Speaking of SaaS, we also added a Stripe billing tutorial with forkable code that you can now use to spin up your own fully functional billing page connected to Stripe in minutes. So that means that with our new web app template, you start with a working authentication system, you start with a working billing system out of the gate, and instead of focusing your time on these features that you've built 10 million times before, you instead focus on the features that actually make your application special and unique. And I'm willing to bet it's not auth nor billing. Now that's not all. We also announced new AI capabilities designed specifically to help you turn your latest fine-tuned LLM models into standalone SaaS applications that you can sell on the internet in hours. The AI app template includes everything I mentioned about web apps, namely the authentication system and the billing via Stripe, but it comes with additional goodies. 
We have a built-in connection to OpenAI that allows you to read and write to their API without integrating, similar to what we offer with the Shopify API connection. You simply add your OpenAI keys to Gadget and you start building the front end of your application because the back end is already talking to your LLM. There's no setup required. We're also giving everybody a $50 OpenAI credit that you can use to explore this new template. This credit's only available for the next three months, so make sure you jump on it as quickly as possible and get it while it's around. With the AI template, you're probably going to need a bunch of additional AI development features that already exist in Gadget, so let's jog your memory as to what those are and what they do. Often, your AI-powered apps are going to need streaming, response streaming. This gives you the ability to return an AI model's response gradually to your end user on the front end to stream that response as opposed to uh, show them a spinner and then eventually show them the entire result, which is a less than ideal front end experience. Streaming is built into Gadget. Should you ever need streaming for your uh, AI powered apps, make sure to reach for the helper that we offer you. Uh, we also have native vector support. You're often going to need this to generate AI embeddings to actually power your LLM models. With Gadget, vector support is built into our models. You don't need separate infrastructure, nor do you need a separate database. It all comes with the Gadget database that's included in every project. Now, this is a lot to take in, so I'm going to pass it on to Harry for a quick tour of these new capabilities in action so that you can see it for yourself. Take it away, Harry. Okay. So as we said, we're launching a bunch of new features today. We've kind of packaged them up into a few different templates that you can use to access them. So when you go to gadget.new to create a new application, you'll see three different options here. The first is the Shopify app template. This is what Gadget has supported, you know, historically. It's a great connection to Shopify with webhook processing, historical data sync, meta field stuff, all that stuff that we're going to still maintain and improve. And then there's two new ones here, which is the web app template and the AI app template. I'm going to go create a my cool web app application to show you what the web app template holds. So the first thing that you'll see when you get dropped into the gadget editor is the normal stuff. You get a development environment with your application kind of pre-hosted, ready to go in the cloud for development, and then a production environment that's ready, you know, when you want to actually go live. Um, and then you get a couple new data models over to the left here. What this is, is a kind of fully functional working user authentication system built in the gadget framework ready for you to kind of customize and extend. So we have a user model here with, you know, first name, last name, email, and then a few actions that kind of make up authorization uh, or sorry, authentication. Uh, we've got our sign in, sign out, sign up, so on and so forth. And what this is, is mostly powered by gadget under the hood with our kind of Google auth triggers. But some of the key business logic that we think uh, folks want to extend is available for that extension inside the actions framework. So you're able to customize things to say, you know, only internal users can sign in or I want to add audit logging or, or what have you. This user authentication system is yours and it's uh, uh, ready to you know, be changed in whatever way you see fit. In addition to the user model, there's the session model. This is our kind of high performance Redis backed session store. Folks don't generally need to trust test that, but you get a data viewer, which is handy for understanding session state. And then we also add this new gadget ink off package to your package JSON, which kind of has a bunch of the auth helpers. So if I go to my development environment, I can show you this auth system in action. You'll see we have this kind of template of boilerplate we expect you to replace, and then this um, sign in with Google button. So I'm gonna click this. Um, Gadget's gonna manage the OAuth dance to take me over to Google. I'm gonna uh, grant access. And then once I do that, I get taken to the signed in route. And here is, you know, my user details. Uh, so great, I was able to sign in with Google. Um, if I hop back over to the editor and I look in the data viewer for the user model, there I am, there's me, there's my Google account, I'm all set up. Um, one great thing that we really like about this is that the Google connection, uh, or sorry, the Google off system right at the start uses credentials provided by Gadget instead of forcing you to go up and set your own, set up your own. 
So this is just really nice for when you're starting out. You don't have to go dance through all Google's hoops to uh, uh, set up an OAuth cred set and get all the scopes right and all this kind of stuff. Gadget just kind of works for you out of the box. And it's one more thing you can kind of kick down the road till after validation or after launch, there's a, a working Google Auth with every single app that's created using this template. So that's great. Um, I'm gonna go back to gadget.new and show you the AI app template. So when I pick the AI app, I'm able to say my cool new AI app. I'll click enter, create another gadget app. Once more, I get my own URLs, I'm ready to go. The AI app uh, template does include the authentication system. Um, you're able to delete it if you don't want it for whatever you're building. But in addition, it includes a connection to OpenAI. So we kind of pre-provision a great OpenAI uh, a client for Node.js, and we pre-provision a connection for that. Once more, this connection is using gadgets keys out of the box, so you don't have to go off to OpenAI and get access. You get GPT-4 right out of the box. And as we said, we're doing that $50 promotional credit where you don't have to pay for OpenAI at the start. You can uh, kind of run it on top of us and again, focus on building your application and what's special about yours instead of faffing about with authentication and you know uh, uh, the BS associated with software development. Um, so if I go to my OpenAI apps development environment here. You'll see I have the same kind of logged in, logged out setting or setup. I can log in with Google. And then once I grant access, we've included just one simple kind of example of using OpenAI. Uh, so what this is is a front end um, React component that makes a call to the back end to actually chat with uh, the GPT large language models. So I'll say, hello, who are you? And we get a streamed response back from OpenAI. If I go into my code here, you'll see there's a post chat route. This is the back end route that powers that. And you'll see we're using our connections.openai object. This is our kind of already set up, already working, already carefully, you know, made resilient API client that knows how to talk to OpenAI. It's just the open source one, but it's just already set up. And then we're just using the normal kind of OpenAI functionality from their API to do a, a, a call. And then critically, we're using the streaming mode, which is kind of the, the way to give a good user experience these days when building AI applications. You don't just want to show a spinner while it's like thinking for 10 minutes. You want to show them the response. So Gadget fully supports the streaming response mode. And we have this little helper that makes it really easy to take a response stream in the kind of unencoded raw format from OpenAI and stream it to the browser. And then likewise on the front end, we have um, a nice use fetch helper for making calls to your streaming routes that knows exactly how to give you back the response as a stream string. And that's the OpenAI template. Okay, that was awesome. Before we wrap up, there's one more exciting announcement for today. We're inviting 20 developers to join our 10-week SaaS incubator program where we help you build and launch an entire company on Gadget in under a month. You can apply and join from anywhere in the world. We'll offer those accepted into the program onboarding support pair programming time, and a bunch of gadget hosting credits and Google ad credits to help you get your launch off the ground as quickly as possible. We'll also offer our own time and mentorship to you along the way. Anyone that meets the minimum requirements can apply to join the incubator program. You just need a couple of years of JavaScript experience, an interesting idea, and the time commitment and ambition to actually be able to build and launch an entire company in under a month. If that sounds like you, please make sure to apply at gadget.dev slash incubator within the next few days. We'll be announcing the participants that are selected in the next few weeks. That's it for us today, folks. We're really excited to see what you all build with uh, Gadget and the latest capabilities that we've shown you today. As always, our Discord is open for questions and discussions, and we're constantly iterating on the product, so feedback is always welcome. For those of you interested in a more in-depth tutorial of all the capabilities we talked about and how they come together, stick around and watch Harry build a full AI app, back end and front end, from scratch to deploy in 15 minutes to get a sense of how this all comes together. Thank you all for your time and uh, best of luck on your gadget projects. Okay. So as we said, we're going to do a demo of a full build of an app using Gadget's new AI functionality uh, in about 15 minutes. So um, what I'd like to build is a AI silly screenwriter application. 
where the user gives us a quote and then we suggest a movie that the quote would go well in. And then uh, given that quote in movie, we author a silly scene, you know, that's set in the universe of the movie that makes use of that quote. Um, so uh, let's get started. I'm going to go to gadget.new. I'm going to use the AI app template that's new today. Call it Super Screen Writer. Click enter. And I get my gadget app ready to go on the internet with, um, you know, my development environment, my production environment. Uh, we have our auth system, which I'm not going to make use of for this demo. And the first thing I'd like to do is build the functionality to suggest, get given a quote from a user, suggest what movie they should uh, ask us to put that quote in. So I'm going to add a database of movie quotes. Um, I added a new model called, oops, uh, should be called movie quote. Um, and every movie quote has the quote itself, which is a string mark that is required, as well as the title of the uh, movie that it's from, I will mark that as required. And then um, this is, you know, ready to be used on the front end if I want at this point, right? I can go to the, oops, to the API reference uh, for my application and see, you know, I could uh, read a movie quote from a script or from the front end. I could do that in React. Uh, I get CRUD by default on my, my movie quote. And if I go look in the database for it, you know, there's nothing there yet, but Gadget's done a whole lot of stuff under the hood to manage all the indexes for this model, like SQL migrate it into existence to be uh, ready to be deployed when I want to go to production. It's all kind of ready to go and ready to run. Um, for my movie quotes, when a user says, okay, I have this silly quote, like use the fridge, Luke. Um, we want to suggest what movies that quote would go well in. And we could do that using like a string similarity search. So we could say like, oh, the um, phrase Luke appears in lots of Star Wars quotes. So we'll suggest that. But that's, uh, that's a strategy that's starting to fall kind of behind because there's a bunch of new technology that allows you to do what's called semantic similarity search. So instead of saying we want to find words that exist in the search string and in the kind of database we're searching through, we want to find concepts that are similar in the search string and the uh, thing in the database. So for example, a quote like um, a monster from the deep should match quotes from Jaws because they concern the same sort of thing. But maybe the Jaws quote has the word shark in it. And that means the same thing as monster from the deep, but they don't share the same like English string characters in them, you know. So what we can do for this is use vector similarity search. What this is, is a conceptual comparison of strings instead of a character wise one. Um, you take a given string and you convert it to a vector through a process called embedding. And we'll use the OpenAI API to do that. And when you get back these vectors, the vectors that represent similar concepts will be in a similar point in the vector space. So the vector for goose is close to the vector for eagle, but kind of far away from the vector for rocket. And so when we're trying to find movie quotes that match in the incoming quote, we're going to look for vectors in the database that match the vector representing the concept of the quote. Um, so I'm going to add a third field here called embedding. And we'll select the vector type. And this is a new feature of Gadget. And this will store that kind of numeric representation of the movie quote. Um, let's get some test data to play with. So I'm going to click the global actions system over here. I'm going to add a ingest data global action. What this is, is just a, a script that we can run to, to gather some open source data. I found a data set on Hugging Face um, that just has a bunch of movie quotes here. and uh, the title of the movie. And so back, oops, back in our gadget editor here, I pasted in a, um, example and I'll go through it line by line to explain how we actually kind of populate our data set here. So I have, uh, the hugging face data set. I'm just making a fetch uh, for that with Node.js, And then eventually I'm going to transform them and insert all those movie quotes into our movie quote database. Um, on the way through though, I'm going to massage the data a little bit, and then I'm going to ask OpenAI to create that vector from the uh, string that represents the quote. So we um, turn it into a list of, you know, title, quote, like the fields of our model here, an empty embedding to start. And then we build a bunch of inputs we're going to send off to OpenAI. We use the OpenAI connection that, as we mentioned earlier, comes with that already wired up, already ready to go uh, API key fully with GPT-4 access and whatnot. Uh, we're going to get back a bunch of those embeddings. We're going to add those embeddings to the movie records in memory. And then we're going to persist them to the database. 
So if I go and open the AI, the uh, API playground for my application, I have my ingest data uh, global action ready to be run. I'll click the play button here um, and Gadget will go off and think, spin up my function in the serverless hosting platform and then run it. And then we get success true, which is great, which means if I go look at my movie quote data, we have a bunch of quotes that have been loaded in. So you can see the quote, the title from the Hugging Face data set, as well as this embedding, which is that kind of gobbledygook vector that makes sense to computers describing where this concept is in, in the vector space. Okay, great. Now I have a database of quotes I can compare incoming quotes to. What I'd like to do is actually build the front end for users to kind of give me a quote, as well as the back end that does that comparison. We'll start with the back end. So I'm going to add a second global action called Find Similar Movies. And I'll just drop in the code so you don't have to watch me type here. And what this does is uh, a little bit different. This one takes a parameter. So in, in this case, the user is going to give us a quote. We're going to compare it. So uh, our code here um, says we expect a quote string parameter. Gadget does the type safety kind of piece of this where the GraphQL API enforces that it's a string and your API client also has nice TypeScript types saying, okay, we this has to be a string and it'll you know squiggle at you if it's wrong. We get our quote parameter here. And then again, we can use the OpenAI connection to get a vector representing the user's submitted quote. And then what we're going to do is compare that vector to all the vectors in the database using Gadget's uh, cosine similarity functionality. This is a vector similarity operator. There's a couple other ones, but I find it works great as a default. So what we say is we want to find all the movie quotes in the database sorted by those that are most similar to the user's vector. And then we want the first four. So this cosine similarity to operator is vector similarity. It's a bunch of annoying work under the hood to make this thing perform at scale. Um, my team and I have gone kind of deep on how to do vector indexing, and uh, we are pretty proud of our system that we built that just, without you having to really do much work at all, you're able to get something that scales to, you know, millions, hundreds of, or sorry, tens of millions of vectors, and still responds like quite snappily for searching across this uh, vector similarity. And once more, that just comes for by default with every app on Gadget. Um, once we have those first four movies that are the most similar, uh, we do a filter just to make sure we remove any duplicates and return it to the client. Okay, so now I've got my back end where a user can submit a quote. I'd like to build the front end now uh, where users are able to do the typing. So I suck at graphic design. I'm just going to remove some of the CSS from the template, and I'm going to cheat here and add this absolutely brutal global style sheet that I made earlier today my quick demo CSS, but at least it won't look terrible. Um, and then I'm going to go to the development application kind of URL, and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the kind of messed up version of the template from me removing that CSS, but we've got a front end here that's kind of hosted and working in rendering React. So I'm going to replace the uh, contents of the front end routes index.jsx, which is that, you know, React logo and stuff you saw a second ago, with... Um, my starter UI here, and I'll explain what this does. So I've just dropped in a new React component. Um, we do some React state management here to capture, you know, what's the quote that they're typing, so on and so forth. Then we have the call to find similar movies. This is using use global action, which is a hook from the Gadget Inc. React package that just helps with managing front end calls. You can always do the like await API.find similar movies sort of thing, but um, in React land, uh, you need kind of um, some boilerplate around managing the kind of intermediate state or the error that comes back from that async call. So use global action is a reactification of the uh, API functions that come with your auto-generated API and API client. Um, so this is what we'll actually end up calling with the user's quote. The way that we do that is in this little form down here. We have a form that says when we submit the form, we're going to submit the quote, and that's going to call find similar to our global action. Uh, the form has like one little input in it here where, you know, we set the quote when the input changes. We have a little placeholder and so on and so forth. Um, when that submission happens, we have a little error renderer. If we encounter any errors, we have a spinner that shows you, okay, it's thinking. And then if we get some data back, we can render a list of movies for the user to pick from to then generate the scene. So let's flip back over. We got our hot module reloading to show us that, okay, as you know, you type, and if I go back here and I say, let gadget generate a new scene, um, there we go. We got our HMR working. So I'm going to say, use the fridge. 
Luke. Hit enter, and then I get an error. Fear not, this is somewhat expected. What this is, is I forgot to go grant permission to the world to execute my uh, global action. I opened the console here and I see I got a fail to load resource uh, 403 status code, which is the status code for permission denied. That's because Gadget tries to be secure by default, where all your stuff and all the things you're building aren't just world accessible uh, by default. You have to make sure that, you know, what you want the world to be able to run is runnable and what you, you know, want to secure is secure. So within my settings and the roles and permissions area, I'll go over to the unauthenticated role. That represents people who aren't signed in yet, uh, which is me on my front end there. And find similar movies is unchecked. So I'll check that. Uh, now I have permission. So if, when I click find quotes, I'll get it thinking. And then there we go. There's our vector similarity search that says, okay, use the fridge Luke is most semantically similar to Star Wars and or the sequel and the first one. Actually, I don't know if that's the, whatever, this one. So now what I'd like to do is when the uh, user makes a selection of one of these movies, generate them an actual scene. Uh, and to do that, we need a, a pair of uh, bits again. We need a back end route that'll do the scene generation as well as the front end to kind of render out the route as, uh, or sorry, out the scene as it's uh, done. So I'm going to start with the back end. I'm going to flip back to the gadget editor here and uh, we'll go out of the front end routes and into the back end routes. This uh, post chat route uh, comes with the AI template as just an example. And so I'm going to uh, change it to be our scene writer. I'll drop the code in here and it's not very different. It's still a call to the open AI connection to make a chat completion, which is the same thing that chat GPT uses. We're going to use the GPT 3.5 model. And we're going to do a little bit of prompt engineering to kind of tell chat GPT what we want. Uh, the prompt is here's a fake movie quote, and then we'll use the user's quote and a movie selected by a user and then we'll say request.body.movie and then we say write a fake scene for that movie that makes use of the quote and don't use too many words uh, we send that off in the messages to chat gpt and critically we want to give the user a good experience where they can kind of see the scene being written as opposed to just staring at a really boring spinner and so we stream the result this is a feature of the OpenAI client that is also supported by Gadget. And you ask OpenAI to stream, it gives you back a kind of low level byte stream. So we have this handy helper from our Gadget server AI helper package that turns it into a nice kind of browser suitable stream for sending back. So uh, now I can make a post request to slash chat uh, and I'm able to make um, scenes. So let's build the front end that uh, is able to submit that. So I'll go back to my front end index and I have a new component I want to add called the scene generator. And the scene generator uh, just kind of renders the response from that slash chat endpoint. Um, and we're calling it with the use fetch helper. Use fetch is just an, a wrapper that reactifies uh, fetching um, on the client, but it has this super handy stream string feature, which kind of does all the text encoding, does all the kind of nasty stuff you have to do under the hood to make fetch give you back, you know, a, a response that grows. Uh, and so we just get this handy data string object back that we can kind of render in our React code. So we have a little button here that'll actually trigger the fetch to run. We just make sure it's post to match the kind of route uh, template. And what we need to do is mount this component in our other one. So I'm just going to go down here and say, if we have a movie, and if we have a quote, render a scene, scene generator, the movie and the quote. Okay, great. Uh, so let me flip over here and I'll say, use the fridge Luke. Uh, we get the same similarities. And then when I click this, the movie state atoms now set and I now get my scene generator rendered. I can click generate scene and there we go. We get a streaming response. Uh, let's see, ChatGPT wasn't feeling very helpful and put in placeholders. But let's see, did it say to launch the fridge? Let's try once more. Dark and cold sounds like my ex-wife. On sexism from the 80s has been captured by them all. It's great. May the fridge be with us. I'll take that. That's close enough. Let's try another one. Let's try... Um, that's a really big monster from the deep. Okay, we got a similarity to Jaws, but I'm just for fun, I'm going to tell it to generate a script to Frankenstein. 
And here we have a scene in the laboratory at night. By the boiling nitroglycerin. That's a really big monster from the deep. Okay, so we've built an AI screen generator. Uh, we've used vectors to do semantic similarity search for uh, helping users find the data that they need, you know, in their terms instead of string terms. And then we've built a streaming API endpoint that uh, makes a request to OpenAI using the built-in OpenAI connection. Could use GPT-4 if you want, using the gadget credits. And we get a nice UI that, you know, might actually be useful for having a laugh or two. Um, that's it for the OpenAI tutorial. You can follow along uh, with the same sort of thing if you go to the gadget guides and look in the tutorials section. We've got a couple different ones. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching the demo.